Hi, I'm Aaron Zeller with SCC. The LME7 burner control and the LMB3 burner control use the same AZL display. Now we have a video on our channel which shows you how to plug that in and log into the controls. Once you're logged in, if you want to make parameter changes, this video is going to teach you how to do that. Once you're logged in, you'll typically find yourself in one of the parameter main menus. We often call these the zero set, the 100 set, the 200 set, and so forth. In each of those main menus are different parameter subsets that can be changed to suit your application. So let's dive right in. Upon logging into the LME7, the display will read zeros and it will be flashing, and you're at the zeros menu level. In some cases, if you log into the LMV3, it may bring you into the 400 set or the 200 set, depending on the status of the burner when you log in. However, when you're in these main menus, simply hitting the plus and minus keys will allow you to navigate through whichever menus are available in the control you're connected to. To get into a submenu, simply hit the enter or reset button, and it will take you into the submenu, in this case of the zero set, and that includes any parameter starting with zero, so any parameter under 100. Hitting plus or minus will allow you to simply scroll through the list of parameters in that subset. If I want to back up, pressing escape, excuse me, pressing minus and plus together is the escape key. And if I back up just one time, I'm back to the zero set. If I hit escape again, it will log me out. So be careful not to do that carelessly or you'll have to re-enter the password. Now, some parameters, for example, parameter 225, have a value that's too large to show on the screen next to the parameter number. In this case, it will show a dot, dash, dot, dash. This is not uncommon for many of the parameters in both the LMV7 and LMV3. To get that parameter, simply press the Enter key and the parameter will be displayed. If you want to change the value, plus or minus, we'll move that value to the left and begin it flashing. It is now eligible to be changed. In this case, we're looking at purge time. Now we know the value we're talking about is in time because the bar over the S for seconds is illuminated. Now I can change the purge time to whatever I would like. Let's say in this case I want to make it 14 and a half seconds. Now this is within the parameters of the control and in some cases within the parameters of what the OEM may have set for high and low limits. But to enter that new, that new value, simply hit the enter key. You'll see the value moves to the right one digit and stops flashing. It's now saved. If I hit escape here, I'm back to 225. If I hit escape once more, I'm back to my main menu, 200. Now, the changes you've made have taken place in the control themselves, in the LME, or in the case of the LMV3, in the LMV3. It's wise to back them up. And in the case of the LME, you'll back them up to this program module so that if something happens down the road, your settings will be saved. In the case of the LMV3, you'll back them up to the AZL itself. In both situations, it's a real benefit should something happen to the control down the road, you may not want to reset every setting. The easiest way to do that is to go to the zeros level, hit enter, and go to, on the LME7, it's parameter 60. On the LMV3, it's parameter 50. But go to parameter 60, I can do a restore or a backup. If I want to do a backup, that saves my settings to this, to this chip. So I'll hit enter here. I'll change the value from 0 to 1 and hit enter. You'll see the display shows run for a moment. And when it's completed, it will say back end. And I've now saved that new purge time to this program module. Now I can simply hit enter and I'm back to off. The process is very similar on the LMV3. But instead of a backup, you will, you will back it up to the AZL instead of to the PME module. I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you still have questions, please contact us directly at techsupport at sccombustion.com. And be sure to look around the rest of our YouTube channel for other valuable content on Siemens combustion controls. Thank you, and have a great day.